new new session uh let's see what are we going to learn today but before that uh let's go around swift learn to see what actually swift learn is all about all right so swift learn as i always say it's india's most sincere learning destination wherein we provide classes for grade 1 to grade 10 all right so how is it sincere come on let's see we are having 100% live interactive classes over here and live and interactive as in you can uh, interact in real time with your teachers all right through audio video calls we have personalized attention batch with maximum to maximum 6 students so that ev uh, every teacher can uh, focus on each student right then we have a dedicated mentor team which will always look after you and your progress and they'll help you out to uh, work upon your weak points then we also cover the syllabus as per your school time schedule so that you can perform very very well there also now let's talk about some of the key features of swift learn so what are key or what are the <coughs> special features of swift learn first of all the detailed progress report how detailed so let's say if you give test of five chapters the report card will be stored of every chapter so that you know which chapter you are doing very good at and which chapter do you need to improve in we also have swift academic test series where you can compete with other students of your age and you can improve and you can see your performance you can also take unlimited practice tests and also subjective tests so that you can practice answer writing right so i'm waiting for just go to the plan and go to the class yes you heard it right the first trial class for you all it is absolutely free so before beginning i would like to request you all to kindly like share and subscribe to the channel of sublon so that you don't miss out on any update any video which can help you out in your lesson plans so what are we going to study today today we are going to learn a bit about photosynthesis and respiration all right so we are going to study about photosynthesis and respiration in today's class and what are our objectives for this class first of all we are going to see what is meant by autotrophs we are going to learn a bit about photosynthesis and what are the reactions involved we are going to learn the structure of stomata and we are going to learn about significance of photosynthesis right so without wasting any time let us quickly begin all right so i ask you which food do you like the most there will be numerous answers such as junk food healthy food light food right but why do we eat food why do we need to eat food to get energy right for nutrients all right and if i ask you where do you get your food from the first and the most common answer that i will get is from plants yes so the basic answer will be from plants and we also get food from animals right now moving forward if i talk about the food where do we get it from either we get it from plants which is vegetarian food and we also get from animals uh, who eventually get their food from the plants right now we get our food from plants but where do plants get their food from if i ask you this question what will be the answer so this is the answer we are going to find out in this chapter of ours all right and how do they prepare food so just as human cook their food in the kitchen plants also prepare their own food okay so uh, the method in which uh, we create or we prepare our food in the kitchen the plants also have their own kitchen and they prepare their food so let us see what is the known as the method of preparation okay so if i talk about humans what happens is humans they are totally dependent on plants and animals for their food right they're not preparing their own food they just get their raw material from either plants or animals but if i talk about plants they do not depend on any organism for their food they prepare their own food they need some raw materials but they do not depend on any other organism how let us see because plants follow the autotrophic mode of nutrition so what is autotrophic mode of nutrition it is the method it is the mode of nutrition in which organisms produce their own food with inorganic materials inorganic like carbon dioxide like sunlight all right etc etc so these are the inorganic materials which we uh, which plants need to prepare their own food and since they follow autotrophic mode of nutrition the plants they are also known as autotrophic okay so if i if i ask you which is the method of uh, plants follow to make their food it is autotrophic mode and this is also known as self nutrition that is they prepare their own food and do not depend on any other organism to prepare their food Okay. So, if I talk about some of them, they prepare their own food. They are the plants, right? And they are known as autotrophs. So, what are the main, what are the things, or what are the materials that plants need to prepare their own food? Okay. So, we need sunlight. Plants do need sunlight. They need carbon dioxide. Some chemicals which are they are getting from the roots, minerals and water. Okay. 
so the organism which create or which uh, make their own food using sunlight water carbon dioxide and some other chemicals they are known as autotrophs plants they are known as autotrophs and they follow the autotrophic mode of nutrition they are also known as producers so why are the plants known as producers because they produce food for the of the organisms on the earth right first of all they produce their own food for energy okay and they use various methods which generally are known as photosynthesis or chemosynthesis okay so the they need sun, they get energy from the sun they get minerals they get water and by using all these raw materials they prepare their own food and since they are preparing their own food they are known as autotroph okay now what is photosynthesis before going on on the definition of photosynthesis let us see uh what are the materials or what are the things we need uh plants for photosynthesis okay so first of all as we make our food in the kitchen the plants also make their food in their own kitchen which is the leaves so leaves the food actually a plant or it is a kitchen of the plant okay so all the raw materials okay if we are making our food the raw material we take it to the kitchen and there we prepare food, right? so in a similar way the plants all the raw material which they need to prepare their food it will reach to the leaves okay so all the material raw material which is required for producing the food it will reach the leaves okay, so how will it reach the leaves let us see now if i talk about water and minerals what happens uh, the roots okay the roots absorb the water and minerals and they transport it through the stem to the leaves okay you can see it the water and minerals it is going from the stem and reaches the leaves okay and how is it done it is done by the vessels which are present in roots branches and the leaves Okay, so there are these vessels which are present in roots, branches, and leaves, and hence it is uh, the water and minerals that are transported to the leaves. Next, we have carbon dioxide, which again is a very important thing, raw material for the preparation of food. So, how does carbon dioxide reach the leaves? It reaches the surface of the leaves through these small holes, small pores, which are known as stomata. Okay, so the tiny holes are present on the surface of the leaves. They are called stomata, and they help the plant to breathe. So with the stomata, they take in the plants, take in the leaves, take in carbon dioxide, and they release water and oxygen. Now let's talk about the structure of stomata and definition of stomata. So first of all, what are stomata? These are these tiny openings which are present on the surface of leaves. Okay, and if I talk about majority of stomata, they are present on the lower side of the leaf. Okay, if I talk about this lower side, the majority of stomata will be present over here. All right. and they are the breathing holes of the plant okay uh this is the structure of stomata so it consists uh, of an opening so this is the opening all right and it consists of guard cells so what happens the guard cells they take in uh, they are guarding the stomata like this and they open and close in this manner okay so there are these different uh, parts of stomata which is supposed to close last then we have wall and these are the guard cells all right so this is the function of guard cells they open and close they help stomata breathe All right. So if I talk about stomata, it is very very small structure, and we cannot be seeing it through our naked eyes. Okay. So there are the structures of stomata. Let us uh, be colored. It is outer thin wall. All right. Then this part is like blue. That part is known as thick wall. We have chloroplasts, and inner wall you can see is a bit thick. Then the outer wall is known as inner thick wall. Then we have epidermal cell and a nucleus. Okay. So these are the basic uh, uh, things present in the stomata. And if I talk about the stomatal pore, it opens and closes, and it is guarded by the guard cell. Now let's talk about sun energy. All right, so sunlight is again a very, very important thing the plants need. It's a very important raw material for the photosynthesis process. Okay, so how does the sun energy is utilized in the leaves? The leaves they contain a green pigment which is known as chlorophyll. Okay, what does chlorophyll do? It helps to capture the energy from sunlight. All right, so uh, the leaves they capture the energy from sunlight. because of the presence of chlorophyll and due to this energy sun uh, of sunlight uh, the plants can make their own food okay so this whole process the process by which the plants and uh, some other organism which make their own food with their raw materials uh, being carbon dioxide and water it is known as photosynthesis all right so if i divide the word photosynthesis photo means light over here and synthesis means to combine all right so the process by which plants make their own food in presence of carbon dioxide water 
sunlight chlorophyll and various other minerals this method is known as for this process known as so photosynthesis all right okay so what happens during photosynthesis let's see what is the reaction that we get during photosynthesis so carbon dioxide which the plants take from uh, air and water okay which is uh, uh, which the plants are getting to the roots they combine in the presence of sunlight which they get from the sun and chlorophyll all right which is the being called pigment in the leaves combine it in the presence of sunlight chlorophyll to synthesize or produce carbon and oxygen so this is oxygen they give out for us and carbohydrate this is the a food that prepare for the synthesis of energy okay so this is the reaction which happens during photosynthesis now i talk about the structure of chloroplast okay it is it is covered by double membrane okay, so you can see the outer membrane and the inner membrane over here all right and the space includes double membrane it is called stroma okay the space which is enclosed by the double membrane it is stroma and in photosynthesis process the dark reaction takes place here okay so the dark reaction takes place over here in the chloroplast okay in the stroma let's see uh, how does it happen what are various things present here so in the chloroplast it extends at several points across its form a lamellar system all right so uh, if i talk about this lamellae they are stacked above one another Okay, so these are like this. You can see it over here. They are just stacked about one another, and these stacks are known as venous. These stacks are known as venous. And if I talk about light reaction of photosynthesis, we are going to learn about light and dark reactions very soon. So these are the center of light reaction of photosynthesis. Which means light reaction of photosynthesis it happens over here. Okay. So what did we saw? Uh, what did we see? Normally they are stacked about about one another, and the stacks are combined to form venous. And venous they are the center of light reaction. Acha. So we talked about photosynthesis, and we saw that there are various raw materials which are necessary for photosynthesis. Right. So what are the raw materials that we need? Sunlight. Then we need water, carbon dioxide, and chlorophyll. So the sunlight is provided by sun, very obviously. The water and other minerals which the plant needs for preparing its food, it is uh, transported from the roots to the leaves through the stem. All right. Then carbon dioxide. Uh, this thing is fulfilled by the air, and chlorophyll is the green color, which is already present. So now we talk about where to breathe. Excuse me. Through our nose. Now we have to breathe one more, and then the respiration process takes place. So plants they also need to breathe like us. Okay. And how do they breathe? Let's see. So the plants they take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to the stomata. We saw the structure of stomata. These are guard, you know, those are guard cells, right? So guard cells they open or they close accordingly for the breathing of the tree or the leaves. Okay. Now what happens when water flows into the guard cells? जब water जाता है guard cell के अंदर स्वेल्स अप तो जो गार्ड सेल होता है इट स्वेल्स अप और जो पोर्स होते हैं वो ओपन हो जाते हैं राइट ओके सो जब गार्ड सेल्स ओपन हो गए तो यहां जो स्पेस है इससे वाटर लूज होगा ऑलराइट एंड देन दे विल श्रिंक अगेन बिकम स्ट्रेट एंड क्लोज द पोर ओके सो दिस इज हाउ द प्रोसेस टेक्स प्लेस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वाटर विल फ्लो इनटू द गार्ड सेल व्हिच विल स्वेल द सेल ओके एंड पोर्स ओपन अच्छा पोर्स ओपन हो गए तो यहां से ट्रांसलेशन इजी हो जाएगा एंड दे लूज वाटर और जब वाटर लूज किया देन अगेन दे विल श्रिंक एंड बिकम स्ट्रेट सो दिस इज हाउ द प्रोसेस गोस ऑन ऑलराइट अच्छा नाउ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट वाटर हाउ इज इट ट्रांसपोर्टेड सो इट इज ट्रांसपोर्टेड बाय द प्रोसेस ऑफ ऑस्मोसिस ओके तो जो वाटर है फ्रॉम द रूट्स इट इज ट्रांसपोर्टेड अप टू द लीव्स थ्रू दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ ऑस्मोसिस and what is responsible or which tissue is responsible xylem okay so to be water hota plant mein that is transported by xylem now let's see what is osmosis to so, osmosis kya hota hai it is defined as movement of solvent we can take the solvent as water in this case through a semi permeable membrane which we can consider as xylem or that particular glue from solution of lower concentration to higher concentration all right so this is the osmosis process and with the help of osmosis process the plants they can absorb the water from the soil all right Now I told you we will be seeing dark and light reactions, and uh, this is the time we are going to learn a bit about what is meant by dark reaction and what is the meaning of light reaction. If I talk about light reaction, uh, what happens in this particular reaction? The energy causes flow of electrons from water along either a cyclic or non-cyclic pathway of photosystem. All right, and photosystem they contain chlorophyll. Okay, so whenever they absorb sunlight, they absorb light energy. What happens? They emit electron. Okay, and this light energy it is converted into chemical energy in ATP and NADH two, and here water splits into hydrogen and oxygen. Now I talk about ATP. So ATP is, can you see? Triphosphate. Okay, so.
So ATP is a double form of ATP is adenosine triphosphate. And if I talk about NADPH, it is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Alright, so here light energy it is converted into chemical energy in form of ATP and NADPH. Hi Chetan, a very good morning to dear. So, uh, in the light reaction, this is the uh, thing that happens, alright. So, light energy it is converted into chemical energy uh, in ATP which is adenosine triphosphate and NADPH which is, which is nicotinamide adenine and nicotinamide phosphate. Alright, so remember the full forms of these things. Now, what happens during this reaction? The sunlight it is taken by chlorophyll molecule and energy is released in form of ATP and NADPH. And what happens with water? Water is split into oxygen and oxygen again is released out in the atmosphere. Alright. So water, the splitting of water takes place which leads to formation of oxygen and then that oxygen is released into the atmosphere for the human beings and for the living organisms. Okay. So this particular reaction it takes place in a disc shaped disc. Alright. So they are of the sh shape of a disc and they are known as either chloride or thylakoids. Okay. So this is the taking place. Two H2O of water, they break down into oxygen and the ions of hydrogen. Now let's talk about dark reaction. A dark reaction is that the carbon dioxide uh, which is present it is reduced to carbon co com compounds like carbohydrates using the chemical energy in ATP and hydrogen in NADPH2. So, the chemical energy hydrogen produced was ATP or NADPH. So, use karte hue. carbon dioxide it is reduced to carbohydrates. Alright, and this reaction occurs in stroma which we saw in the structure of the leaves. Right. And what happens is that our CO2 hai, it is fixed into glucose with the help of enzymes like glucose. Alright, so what happens? It utilizes ATP and NADPH for formation of different types of sugar. Okay, so if I tell you about uh, the summary of light and re uh, dark reaction, what happens? So light reaction. Hai. Okay, so light reaction. What is the light reaction? It is the initial stage of photosynthesis. Okay, so first step is photosynthesis. Ka, jahan par kya hota hai? Light energy trap hoti hai to produce ATP and NADPH. So light reaction, it is defined as the initial stage of photosynthesis in which light energy is trapped to produce ATP and NADPH. And if I talk about dark reaction, what is dark reaction? It is the second stage of photosynthesis. Okay, light, uh, dark reaction comes after light reaction. So it is the second step of photosynthesis. Huh? Is what energy will be here, ATP or NADPH. Se, it is used to produce glucose. All right. So this is how we can summarize light and dark reactions. And let's move forward. If I talk about photosynthesis, if I talk about light intensity, photosynthesis So light intensity is directly proportional to the rate of photosynthesis. Then let's talk about carbon dioxide presence. So uh, the more carbon dioxide the plant gets, they will be able to perform photosynthesis in better way. Okay. Uh, carbon dioxide is same as oxygen for humans. All right. So we need oxygen to survive. Not need carbon dioxide. So the more carbon dioxide they get, the more photosynthesis they can perform. Next is temperature. So with the increase in temperature, the rate of photosynthesis will also increase gradually. All right. If I talk about water availability, yes, that is also again very necessary thing. So less water means less photosynthesis and more water uh, definitely it will lead to a good photosynthesis. And chlorophyll that is very very essential for photosynthesis. Alright. Now if I talk about uh, life on earth, yes, that is very obvious that we cannot be living without photosynthesis process. Why? Because this is the process which plant uh, use or which plant uh, take in to perform, um, to release energy. Alright, and they uh, they take in carbon dioxide and they give us oxygen. So here oxygen is very vital for survival of living organism. So if the pla if no synthesis is occurring on the planet, there will uh, be no taking in of carbon dioxide and giving out of oxygen, which will probably lead to the extinction of this species over here. Now what is the significance of photosynthesis? Let's see what is the significance of photosynthesis. First of all, uh, in the process of photosynthesis, high energy is converted into chemical energy. The solar energy, the plants take in the solar energy and they convert it into chemical energy. Let's talk about processes. Oxygen is released into the environment. That is why I told you that it is impossible for us to live without the process of photosynthesis being going on. So oxygen is released in the environment and this is how or because of this only we are able to survive on the earth. Next thing, except plants, no other organism can directly utilize solar energy to prepare food. Right? We cannot use uh, solar energy uh, to prepare food within ourselves. Okay? So we are somehow dependent on the plants for the survival. Okay? And plants and their products are major source of almost all organisms on the earth. That's very obvious. All right. Uh, human beings consume animals also. Somehow the animals, they are dependent totally on the earth. So if you talk about plants, they are the basic source of uh, food on the earth. And hence they are also known as autotrophs. Now uh, let's discuss how to prove 
okay that starts prepared okay so the food is prepared in leaf during photosynthesis so how do we prove that starts present in the leaves so what will happen if we put iodine on the leaves iodine solution on the leaves what will happen it will turn into blue black okay so iodine hai agar wo hum put karte hain leaves par so it leaves will turn into a blue black color and this will prove that there is starch present in that leaf okay so the leaf which was in the light it performed photosynthesis and hence it produced starch okay so by putting on the iodine solution which will eventually turn it into blue black it will be proved that the starch is present in the leaf okay so uh, we have covered the major portion of the chapter and let's go on for some asking questions the green color pigment that trap the light energy it is known as chlorophyll all right so the uh, leaves have this pigment which is used for trapping the light energy that we get from the uh, sun and therefore we can uh, the plants can perform photosynthesis what are the properties of photosynthesis very easy first we need light which is the solar energy which we get from sun then water all right water and some other minerals and this is prepared by the roots chlorophyll is the green colored pigment which is present in the leaves and carbon dioxide it is present in the air all right so ex exchange of gases they are called stomata so they are breathing holes of uh, the of the leaves right and they are uh, covered by guard cells which open and close accordingly to help plants to breathe this part of plant is called food very special because the food is prepared in the leaves and hence leaves are also known as the food factory of the plants we also saw the equation for photosynthesis so what happens the carbon dioxide which the plants get from air and water which they get from the roots eventually which uh, you know which is uh, passed from roots to leaves through branches and stems uh, they combine in uh, the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll sunlight get from solar energy or sunlight get from sun and chlorophyll green colored pigment which is present in the plant so carbon dioxide water combine uh, with uh, each other in presence of sunlight to produce photosynthesis carbohydrate plus oxygen so here is carbohydrate is used as food and oxygen is released into the atmosphere for human beings to breathe acha next well question So let's read what the question is all about. Ram once saw Raghav planning of cutting all the trees around his house. Ram asked Raghav for reason for this step. Raghav replied that these trees do not provide him anything like fruits, timber, etc. So he is cutting them. Ram explained him though they are not providing him fruits, timber, plants, etc. But still they are useful to all. Okay. So how are plants useful if they are not providing us with any fruit or flower or timber? Because they perform photosynthesis, right? So they give out oxygen and they take carbon dioxide, which helps to clean our environment. And hence, even if they are not providing with uh, any fruit or plant, they are very vital. They are very useful for us. Now, so for second question, how ate all the leaves of a small plant? But then also new leaves seeds sprouting after two days. How did the plant survive without leaves? So by the time the cow ate the uh, leaves, and uh, you know the duration in between, okay, the duration in between when the cow ate the leaves and new leaves were sprouted. How did the plant survive? So the plant survive on the food which was stored in the stem and the roots. All right, and then the new leaves started sprouting, which was eventually helpful for uh, you know performing photosynthesis again. Now, what are the values of Raman and Raga, which are shown here? So Raman stopped Raga, which means Raman was a good thinker. He was an intelligent boy, and he was thinking about eco-friendly ways. And Raga, he is a bit of self-sufficient. He doesn't care about the environment, and he is not alright. So we should not be like Raga. We should not be like Raman. We should preserve our environment. We should save trees, and we should uh, save trees from being cut down. Now let's talk about some interesting facts. Uh, if I talk about photosynthesis, it collects an estimated 130 terawatts of energy from the sun. So that is a very very large number. And the sunlight that the plants uh, receive, okay, they can convert only one 0.18 percent of that sunlight into energy. Okay, so there is a very very small fraction of the sunlight which they eventually convert it into energy. And photosynthesis, it just uh, doesn't need only carbon dioxide sunlight. They also need many more things like water, nitrogen, phosphorus, and many other minerals. Now there is a challenge for the day, which says, does photosynthesis take place only in green leaves? All right. So uh, many of you might be thinking that yes, uh, photosynthesis might take only place in green leaves, but no, actually it can take place in non-green leaves also. Okay, what happens in non-green leaves? Chlorophyll it is present in a bit less quantity, so we cannot see this green color. Okay. So the green color of the leaf it is only due to the chlorophyll presence, and since chlorophyll is present in a bit less quantity in the uh, leaves of different color like yellow, uh, red, etc. So, uh, what happens since chlorophyll is present in a bit less quantities and other pigments which are present, so they you know overshadow the mask of the green color of chlorophyll. All right, so they do not appear green, but they perform photosynthesis. Now, so what happens? We have lost. So, dash and oxygen are final products of photosynthesis. So, we have glucose and oxygen are final products of 
for the next topic they are present on the surface of leaves very obviously okay so it moves water and minerals and transport it to the leaves through stem is all right so and so that move and so we have learned, so we have learned about water so now all the plants which will prepare their own food and what are the raw materials which they need they need uh, carbon dioxide sunlight water and various other minerals and uh, they also have this uh, chlorophyll all right so in com in presence of all these materials they perform a photosynthesis to synthesize their own food we also saw the chemical reaction which is uh, responsible for photosynthesis and some raw materials which we need all right then we saw the uh, structure of stomata and various things which are present in stomata right and significance of photosynthesis so these are the various things that we covered today and i hope you might have learned or you might have understood everything that we have covered today so we will be meeting uh, tomorrow with a new lesson with some more things about photosynthesis and the process all right so till then keep revising keep learning stay in your homes and take care of yourself thank you thank you very much and let's meet in the next session very soon